having spent a couple of days I suppose here visiting Petra I have picked up a few tips that I'd like to be able to share my first tip would be don't come in the middle of the day that's a mistake that we made on our first day so we had lunch and then we must have come in I reckon probably at about one o'clock in the afternoon and the crowds of people the hordes of tourists but also I think the amount of locals who kept on jumping on top of us outside of the treasury trying to get us to basically pay for their services to take us up to the viewpoint and it was all just incredibly overwhelming and I think that the, the heat of the day wasn't helping matters. Do you want to go to the view my friend? No, thank you. The best picture from the top. You see the top? we had had this amazing plan or at least I seem to think that it was an amazing plan that on that very first day we were actually going to catch up some transport up to I believe it's Little Petra where you can then come into the main part of Petra using what's known as the back entrance that would have taken us first of all to the monastery and then we would have hiked down those 800 steps instead of having to go up and my logical thinking was that by the time we got down to the treasury it would have been much later on in the day and a lot of the crowds would have dispersed however both our hotel concierge turned around and said to us that it wasn't possible oh no thank you <laughs> just being offered some postcards um our hotel concierge had told us that no it's not possible the government's closed off that path but I persevered we went to the visitors information centre and I was also asking about getting transport up to use the back entrance and the chap there also said it's not possible the government's closed it off and I tried to pry a little bit more because what he was saying is that it would take about two hours to hike from the main visitors entrance up to the monastery and because of the road being closed up there it would mean that our transport wouldn't be able to take us as far as what traditionally it could and therefore it was going to take two and a half hours to hike it therefore we would be better off time wise just coming in the normal way i then asked him why why had the government closed it off and he later on in this discussion gave the reason that they were doing restoration to the actual footpath itself and the two just didn't kind of align because I was thinking but you said that we can use the footpath it's just going to take longer but then that's the reason why because they're doing restoration to the footpath so I really wasn't too sure and since actually coming into Petra we've got talking to a lot of local people and they've turned around and said that it's absolute nonsense that that back entrance is closed and that it would have been fine for us either to have driven our rental car up there and we either would have just hiked in and then back out to go and pick up the car or alternatively just come out the main entrance where there's loads and loads of taxis waiting and just got a taxi to take us back up to where we'd park the car at Little Petra. So it's a little bit frustrating knowing that the plan A that we initially had, that we felt like we had to scrap, we actually didn't have to scrap, but then we ended up meeting some amazing locals on that very first day. And so we kind of reflect on that and say, well, actually, had we stuck to our plan A, we wouldn't have had the plan B that it turned out to be, which was kind of cool. The other thing that I also really picked up on is with regards to the local people, there are so many of them who are selling either tourist souvenirs or food or drinks more, more drinks than food and pretty much every single store that you walk past they will be vying for your business and they are not pushy at all what we found is that if you smile and you just say no when you follow it up with a thank you and making sure that you're smiling or if they ask you you know how are you don't try and shut them off thinking oh no because if I engage with them we're going to get trapped into a sale actually if you engage with them and if you're polite and you say you know I'm, I'm well thank you and how are you they really appreciate that they then might say you know please join us for a cup of tea but then at that point when you say oh no we're okay thank you or we've just had some tea that's it they don't push any further but just don't be rude about it don't plank them 
don't you know be sort of cut in, in your responses just because I've seen it happen to some of the locals and it just hasn't really been very nice to watch on whilst I probably started off with this one definitely get in here early because the crowds are just next to none there was just a few people in here when we arrived this morning and I think we entered in at just gone 10 past 6 even though it opened up at 6 o'clock it really wasn't problematic being that little bit later with regards to things like food and drink, uh, the amount of places that sell food is a little bit limited. As I say, the basin, so just before you start going up those 800 steps to the monastery, there is a proper restaurant. You've got those three options of either a buffet, the falafel salad, or the bagged up lunch. Or if you get up to the monastery, there is also a sort of cafe I suppose it is a cafe it's not really a restaurant that does serve some sandwiches up there so food wise if you don't like the idea of having next to no choice you may wish to pick up something and bring it in yourself but drinks wise there's certainly no need to have to lug around lots of really heavy drinks because there are places everywhere throughout Petra where you would be able to pick up a drink with no issue and I suppose my final tip would just be don't just give it one day. We have spent an entire day in here today. As I say, we got in just after opening and we've only really been able to do that main trail and then up to the monastery and back again. We're really grateful that we came in here a couple of days ago and we're able to do other parts of it. We still haven't been able to explore all of it. For example, the place of high sacrifice we were saying, had we been able to do the back door entrance into Petra on our first day, we probably would have made it up to the high place of sacrifice today these things happen from our experience my biggest tip would be give yourself a minimum of two days and if you can give yourself more time in your trip give it more than that but above anything else come visit Petra is just breathtaking and stunning and there's just nowhere else in the world like it so just come that's that's the biggest tip i could possibly give you come visit and enjoy it and andy has got one last tip that i completely forgot about don't bring a caroline <laughs> no, that wasn't what we just <laughs> oh right um, no bring com comfortable shoes there's a lot of walking i hate you <laughs>